welcome to Vision Forward's Tech Connect Live, connecting you to the world of assistive technology. And now, here are your hosts, Corey and Luke. Luke. Oh, wait, are we on? We are. Uh, Luke. <laughs> Hello. Listen, no. You oh, listen to me. Oh, we are. Oh, we are. Listen Hi. to me. <laughs> yes, I'm listening. E oops. <laughs> what are you doing? E oops. <laughs> Everything that. <laughs> <laughs> this relationship is based on trust. Is it? We cannot have Tech Connect Live without trust. Okay. Who, right, who, before, who? right before we unmuted the microphones, you said to me, hmm. I don't trust you. I did. What kind of show are we going to have today <laughs> if you don't trust me? Um, probably the same show as always. That's it. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> no. uh, if, if you in the chat trust Corey, then let us know. We'll take a T for trust. Oh, okay, good. Or a D for do not trust. Okay, I wonder what YouTube feels when it's literally a one-letter comment. Um, that's a good question. It's probably not great. Maybe just like trust or do not it's trust. Probably not a big, uh, <laughs> it's not huge in the engagement. <laughs> Is Cor okay? So for those who are cited, does Corey have a trustworthy face? Ooh. For those who are not cited, does Corey have a trustworthy voice? Hi, I'm here to talk to you about trust. <laughs> okay. I'm Corey. My middle name is Trust. I don't I don't trust the fact that you suddenly change your voice in order to try and get people to trust. <laughs> Hi, you. I'm Mr. Trust. <laughs> Corey Ballard. Corey Trust Ballard? Yes, yeah. exactly. C T B? Corey T. Ballard. Yeah. T stands for trust. Corey Ballard Trust would be C B T, which is also the acronym for cognitive behavioral therapy. Just wanted to let you know. <laughs> Good. Good. I wish I had a uh, screeching halt sound. <laughs> That's as close as we get. That'll work. Yeah. Uh, I am doing very good advertising here. I've got a Vision Forward mug. Oh, very good. I'm just going to place that in front of my black shirt for best optimum contrast. And uh, if you'd like to buy this wonderful mug, then they are available in our store. Well, I don't know that they are. Oh, they, they may be oh, available in our store. Uh, producer Jonathan has something to yes, say. Jonathan, uh, Jonathan so, quick quick question. Yeah. Do you trust Corey? I do. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Do you trust me? Uh, yeah. There so, you go. Um, interesting fact about mugs. No. Oh, okay. uh, oh. So the reason why we call people's faces their mug. mug yeah. Oh, good call. Yeah. 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 Mm. Ugly mug or mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. The reason people call it that mm. is because in the 18th century, it was the fashion to have really grotesque face style lugs. Oh, yeah, like the ears were the handles. Yes. Okay, I got to dig it. Yeah. There's a legitimate mm. historical precedent mm. for uh, mugs. There you uh, go. Being grotesque. Jonathan didn't even look that up. He just knew that. I yeah. looked it up recently. No. Oh. Okay, I would love to know the context of how that came to be, but I think we should leave people in suspense. Hey, everyone has a different Saturday night, so you <laughs> don't judge. Often when I look at Corey's head, all I see is a steaming mug of coffee. Oh, my. I well, appreciate that. <laughs> I'm always full of energy. Full of something. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, let's get this thing on, uh, uh, what are we uh, doing? on the rails Why here. Are we so, here? hello, everybody. Welcome back Hi. to another Tech Connect Live. Mm. We appreciate anyone who may have popped into some of our live streams last week. Yeah. Where were we last week? Well, we were in California we and were? at a little conference you may have heard of. Oh, a little bit. Uh, it's called uh, California State University Northridge Conference, or CSUN, as it's probably better known. And the uh, big assistive technology deal, there is a show floor, lots of equipment, yeah. uh, vendors, new stuff. And there's also sessions that you can attend to learn more about the exciting world of assistive technology. How many people do you think come? Because I heard a number a few years I'm gonna ago. Go, I'm going to go 2,000. I heard over 5,000. Ooh. At some point, and wow. and I and it is geared towards all disabilities, but I do sort of feel like blindness. Now, well, you, you know what? You'd maybe maybe you aren't the best person to answer this. Do you feel like it's skewed more towards blindness, or no? Is that just what well, I was Colby, interested? I'm glad that you asked me because I am the best person to answer that question. Oh, okay. Um, Should I trust your answer? <laughs> well, the answer is I don't know. Okay. No, no, no. Uh, the answer is yes. I would say most of the vendors there are there with assistive technology for people with vision loss. Um, yeah, I mean, there was there is an educational slant as well. Yeah, If I was you look say at that. the yeah. sessions, but very, very focused around blindness and, and low vision. Maybe yeah. the session. So, so that's what we want to talk today. There are two parts to this conference, as you mentioned. There mm -hmm. is the sessions during the day. Um, there's a bunch of them going on. Yeah. And then there's also the show floor where we went and looked at actual technology. Yep. And so for the sessions, they seem to be maybe not as 
uh, focused on people who were violent. There was a lot, don't get me wrong. I would but, say the majority was still, but there was yeah. other stuff too. Yeah. Yeah. So we, uh, so our plan for today is to do sort of a, a wrap up um, of what we saw. For those that may have joined us either live on the floor or we also streamed the the night before we flew home, mm. we talked a little bit too. So some of this you may have heard already, some of it will be new. Uh, but our plan is to talk about some of the sessions we went to and then also talk about some of the technology we saw on the floor. Sounds good. Okay. <laughs> I do just have one oh, thing. Jonathan, uh, please, uh, please. So um, one thing that folks might not know is that CSUN conference has been going on for over 30 years. Yes, yeah, 39 years. Actually. Yes, this right. was the 39th. So this is a well-established uh, tradition yeah. uh, in California. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, I just did quick research on it. Looks like they've received historically like the biggest donations they have since like uh, 2021. So like they're actively like drawing Apple, Mackenzie Scott, uh, oh. Autodesk, uh, those are that was for the latest conference, was most it? Most recently. Interesting. Yep. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. So they're constantly on the upswing. So wait, so not only are they uh, getting donations, but they're also charging an arm and a leg to attend. Well, the, I believe the floor, the show floor is free. Yes, it is. Yes. So I wonder mm. how many people potentially come just for just the for floor that. versus the At sessions. At least one Tom Persky. We know that for That is true, yes. Mr. Persky. We did have lunch yes. with him and a colleague. Mm. Uh, but yeah, I, I'd be curious. I, uh, for anybody watching, put throw it down in the comments. Have you gone to CSUN? And if so, did you do both the sessions and the floor or just the floor? I'm curious. And uh, we would like to give a shout out to the star of the show, Corby. What was the star of the show? I have no idea. Steve Wonder. Uh, Jonathan guessed Stevie Wonder. Now Stevie was there, but there was a sh there was a star shining much brighter than Stevie Wonder, Corey. It came in the form of tacos and oh, margarita. The, oh, yeah, uh, puesto. Yes, puesto. Oh, that's just a given. I, should, I didn't place. put that on our list, but no. we uh, last year when we went, we discovered a Mexican restaurant out there. Mm -hmm. uh, Right across the street from Disneyland, pretty oh, yeah. much. You yeah, can hear yeah. Disneyland. Mm -hmm. It's called Puesto. Oh, so good. And the tacos and margaritas are amazing. We mm -hmm. went twice last year. Yeah, we did. And we went once this year, mm -hmm. and it was everything I remember. I was a little worried that maybe we were building it up in our heads. Nope. But man, those thirty dollars tacos. Yeah. Uh, yes. 30, no. Each $30. one was uh, each one was ten bucks, and we got three. Well, they were yeah, and they were pretty small. Uh, yeah, so you got to get three. You pretty much have to get three. So. But I, I, I will still say they were <laughs> worth they, every penny. They were at worth every $10. Oh my gosh, they yeah. are so good. So, uh, yeah, so if you happen to be in the area, definitely visit Puesto. If you go to C go to CSUN, but just don't attend uh, CSUN, just go to Puesto and say, well, you <laughs> that's can go, to the, go to the floor because that's free. And <laughs> well, that's then, true. And, and then, then meet just us, go to Puesto. Yeah, meet us at Puesto. <laughs> Maybe we could try to get them to sponsor us next year and we can live stream from there. That would be so And then just get free. Show. Yeah, yeah like, that's a good name as well. Like Puesto it, Post yeah. Show, yeah. Tech uh, Connect Puesto. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, the, so that was the start of the show. But we did okay. also, Corey, Corey, we went to some sessions. We Let's did. talk about some sessions. So okay. uh, a few sessions that we went to. Let's see if I can remember some of them. We went to a session about uh, indoor navigation with Mike May, who we also saw talk there last year. Yeah. We went to a session. Well, do we are we, gonna, are we just going to go through them? Or we'll we go to what sessions we went to first, and then we'll talk okay. about them. Okay, all right. Uh, we went to a session about artificial intelligence from a very nice uh, Englishman. Yeah. We went to a session from Google about uh, changes to the Google Lookout app. And what else did we go to? We went to. Um, it was a one, wasn't it? Oh yeah, we went to the the brain computer so interface. So we did. Yes, yes, yes. That you. was one yeah. of them. Yeah. We went to. Oh, definitely some more. But anyway, those are I the know. ones that stick in the head at the moment. So, uh, Corey, favorite session was. I would have to say the AI one was yes. probably the best. Mm. Uh, talking about the, it was kind of cool because he. So he was a CEO of, and I can't think of the company now, which is a bummer, but well. uh, br it was a British company. It's not with an A, I think. Yeah, I think you might be right. They're a web, uh, web accessibility company, but yeah. he had been in the AI business for well over 20 years. Mm. I think if I remember correctly, he said he made his own AI at the age of 10. That's what he and said. Then gra and graduated from university at 16. Yeah. 
right? So, I mean, oh, did he say graduate or he was doing college work? I'm not sure. Yeah, what, you, yeah. E either way, he had been in the artificial intelligence game for a, a long there's time. A, a game, there's a video game called Metal Gear Solid 2, Corey. Have you heard of this? No. Okay. There is a character in Metal Gear Solid 2 called Fat Man, and he is a guy who uh, makes bombs. According to the Metal Gear 2, uh, Metal Gear Solid 2 lore, he made his first nuclear bomb when he was uh, 10 years old, I think, or something like that. Okay. So <laughs> he's kind of reminding me of this guy. Okay. Except uh, his name, he, he's not, he wasn't Fat Man. No, he was not, no. Uh, <laughs> I am Fat Man. Um, so <laughs> anyways, yeah. he, uh, so he kind of talked about like the history of... Yes, thank you. Jonathan has confirmed Fat Man did make his first nuclear bomb at 10 years old. Thank you. <laughs> um, he, Sorry. To derail, to derail you there. He, uh, so he talked about the history of AI. Yeah. Uh, you know, sort of like what were past AIs look like. And then mm. now talking about these new generative mm. AIs and where it's going to go. And in the in some of the challenges of AI too, you know, what are what are we facing, biases and all those kind of things. Mm. But I took away, and I feel like I've said this a bunch of times now, so maybe I feel like I'm repeating myself over and over again. But yeah. I do feel like he he opened my eyes to potential revolution in uh, for AI, especially around computer use, especially for screen reader users. Mm. One of the things that we've always sort of, well, maybe joked about is not the right word, but we sometimes have people come in who sit down for an assessment and they say, well, I, I just want to talk to the computer, right? I don't yeah. know the keyboard. I don't want to type. I just want to talk to it. And they sort of have this, 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 uh, unrealistic expectation where you just sit down and be like, hey, computer, write an email to John saying, how's it going? Mm. Where that's not what it's like. Yes. But I think what's interesting when you start to look at AI, that's what it is going to end up being. That's a dream. Yeah. And I don't think it's a, I don't think it's a hard dream. I mean, I think you could probably do a lot of that already today. Yeah. And then I think that also the interesting thing too was to think about how... AI is going to change the way a, a screen reader, a user interacts with the computer. Like, mm. the big example is, why do I smell garlic? <laughs> Don't look at do you me. Smell that? <laughs> I'm not, it's like garlic. It smells really good in here. Sorry, that totally derailed wow. me. I okay. wonder if uh, Rose in the kitchen is making something. Okay. okay. Anywho, um, one of the things that I that I, we, we already see AI explaining pictures yes. and doing a really good job about it yep. and the ability to ask follow-up questions. You can go back on our channel and take a look at like our Be My Eyes uh, video where we did Be My AI. That's a prime example of the ability to use AI to ask uh, follow-up questions. But it's going to be very, e well, maybe not easy isn't the right word, but it will be, uh, at some point, you're going to be able to load up like a complicated spreadsheet and just ask the built-in AI on your computer, explain this spreadsheet to me. Like mm. the example I have given them a bunch of times now is that every month I get some financial um, spreadsheets where it's showing sort of the you know year to date and this month's spending and Shows everything. Shows how much Corey's children are costing well, well, every month. Yeah, it's, more, <laughs> it's more here at Vision Forward <laughs> no, no. budgeting, but it's a really complicated spreadsheet. There's different colors to mean if you're uh, you know, up you know, below a surplus or a deficit. You know. Now, Corey, quick mm -hmm. question. Mm -hmm. What color represents surplus? Uh, usually black and red mm. for, yeah, if you're in the black or in the red. Now, what did we learn about uh, using the color red, Corey? Yes, it's not good because for, color, for color, people who are colorblind, green and red are the most uh that's the most th common form of color yes, blindness exactly so we must have attended a session on web accessibility at some point because i remember that um yeah what was that one from <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I don't even, uh, that's funny because i can't think about that one yeah. from now but uh oh that was word to pdf oh that's right that's i forgot yeah. about that so anyways my point is is it'll be uh, so easy for us to, to to open up a spreadsheet and probably using copilot since that's yes. what in microsoft's mm -hmm. uh, ai is mm -hmm. and say explain this this PowerPoint to me as if I'm five years old, <laughs> you know, yeah. but, but, but to have it just say such and such department is in a surplus, such and such is in a deficit, quick, you see, quick you know. Quick question, Corey. Yeah. Okay. You bring up the spreadsheet, you hit print screen, you go to chat GPT, you paste it in. Nope. Mm. It's going to just be, Copilot will be built right in. No, no, I understand. But at the moment though. 
Oh, you could, could probably, do it now. You could probably do that already. I bet you, but print screen, you're, if it's a big enough spreadsheet, you're not uh, getting course, everything, course, you know. Course, yes. But again, it, I do think, and then we had a conversation coming out of that. We, have, we originally said, well, great, now nobody's going to have computer skills, right? AI mm -hmm. is going to make us... Uh, even stupider. Even stupider, and now we don't know how to use a computer. But mm -hmm. I, my argument to that is, as somebody who is blind, you have to spend so much time learning technology to a level that sighted people don't have to, just to even be on a, a level playing field, right? Yeah. We can't just open up Word and visually figure it out and move a mouse and click, which mm -hmm. is sort of natural. We need to know all the keyboard commands. Mm -hmm. We need to know all of this kind of mm -hmm. stuff. So will AI allow us to focus more on our actual job, the reason we were hired, our talent, what we're good at, mm -hmm. versus having to spend so much time learning the computer? Now, that, I will that's say, sort of my Corey, argument. Yeah. one of the reasons that you were hired is because you are good at JAWS. That is true, but my I, am tra I was hired to train <laughs> people on <laughs> JAWS. So. But if I could just say to AI, train this client, I could go get a cup of coffee. <laughs> now, what's the chances that you would still have a job in that scenario? <laughs> That's true. Well, if I show, don't show anyone else how to use the <laughs> go by. But I think it's an interesting, a really, it really opened up my eyes, and it was, uh, it's something now that I, I just keep thinking about, and how is it going to change the way we use the computer? If anybody in the chat would like to be able to interact with their computer just by talking to it and not have to worry about any of those um, you know, difficult keyboard commands that you have to use if you're a screen read user, let us know. And even the creation of like a PowerPoint oh, yeah, presentation, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Create a PowerPoint about this. Here are my, mm. here are my 50 bullet points. Mm -hmm. um, or, you know, can you just write it in words, slide one, slide two, mm. pick, you know, say out this is the kind of picture, and then you just import that in and it converts that into now an you, actual you PowerPoint? You can kind of already do this using the designer feature. Sure. Yeah, because uh, that will basically, pre you can just put your info into the slides and it will pre them up for you. Yeah. I have to say I use that all the time because yeah. uh, I honestly am not very good with PowerPoint, but designer makes me look like I know exactly sure. what I'm doing. So. And I bet you, I mean, that's a design, it's probably AI. Uh, probably. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, it'll be interesting. I'm, I'm, I'm more and more excited. I think that the assistive technology uh, field has been a bit stagnant lately. Mm. And I think that's true even for for um, mainstream. I think we, I think there were such huge leaps and bounds. We saw so many great advancements, but I think we sort of now have hit a bit of a ceiling. Mm. You know, I think that that evolution, that innovation is going to slow down eventually. And I think that's kind of what we're seeing. But I do think AI is the next big thing that yeah. we're going to really start to um, see. We've been huge. saying that for a while now. Yeah. I, I, I want a phone. <laughs> I want a computer and I want a phone that that says, I, I want it to be more than just a faster processor and a better camera. Mm. And that's really pretty much all mm. things are nowadays. But I mean, if we can just talk to something and get it to do whatever we want, it doesn't have to be in the style of a phone anymore. You could literally well, have a little pin that you pin to your... Yeah, to your, a little uh, earbud that little you wear earbud. all day. Yeah. yeah. Starfleet emblem. Starfleet yeah. emblem. Thank you, Jonathan. You probably can make yeah. whatever you want, honestly. Yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah. But I do. Th I mean, I think that is the future of computing, mm. and it is going. <laughs> no, no, I agree with you. <laughs> and it is. I mean, what you see, like in uh, Iron Man, with yeah. uh, what's his name? Tony Stark. Jarvis. Jarvis. Like, I oh, kept wanting the, to say um... Jeeves, and <laughs> I'm like, <"Tony> Stark. <laughs> but I, I mean that. You know, that's that's far away. But I do think that is going to become the norm, mm. where you're just talking to uh, an AI that's talking back to you, yeah. you know, as if they're human. So. Oh, I do have a comment. Mm. Um, so Connor Smith would like to Hi, just say good show. He loves oh, the thank show. You. He's oh, thank you, Connor. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Excellent. Really, appreciate, really it. appreciate that. All these comments, you know, they help uh, keep us uh, keep us going, you know, because it uh, makes us feel nice to know that people are listening. It so. does. And if you could take a moment to like this video and subscribe if you haven't, that's also super helpful for the channel. such a publicity hound, Corey. We, but we, you know what? We need it. We've got good content, and we need to get it out more. So we're aiming, uh, Sam at the Blind Life has got, what, 69,000 subscribers? We're aiming to get there by the end of the year. So, uh, well, you... <laughs> I, for, I forgot to tell you that it's by the end of next week. Oh, okay, by the end of next week. So. Have, yeah, we had to push up our, our deadline. <laughs> 
slides a little bit. So uh, if you could create a bunch of bot accounts, that helps me. I was actually thinking though, you could do that. You could just create uh, Gmail accounts Use and Gmail. then just like and uh, subscribe to videos. <laughs> if that makes you feel better, I guess you could. What? So, all right. Any? Do you? What do you? So I, I just talked forever. Do you? What do you have to say about AI or any of the other sessions? Any? AI is pretty cool. <laughs> uh, no, you covered it. I mean, uh, we've had this conversation many times before. Yeah. So I don't have anything interesting to say. I will say I really enjoyed the uh, the session on the brain computer interface stuff, which yeah. wasn't really particularly relevant to the work that we do here. Uh, but it was really interesting. This company have these different uh, devices, which are basically come in the form of like headphones or um, just bracelets at one bracelets, point. Yeah, just like regular about. looking consumer devices that are able to interpret uh, your intentions, your thought intentions. So basically, uh, yeah, I mean, it was kind of interesting. Um, you can put these headphones in and they're obviously, you know, on your head, right? And when you, when you, yeah. that's how headphones work. When you think they're able to pick up from the background the electrical impulses of you yeah. thinking about a particular direction and then interpret that into moving something. Um, yeah. I don't know. It's kind of the, the the cool thing about it was it was not a neural implant. It was uh, external. Yeah, uh, he, and uh, he kind of talked about the the invasive versus non-invasive. Yes, yeah. His company was a non-invasive. Non-invasive, and the difficulty with that is just trying to interpret the actual thought patterns from the background noise. Yeah. Um, and uh, at one point. Um, they were talking about AAC devices and thinking about words and yeah. then having those words be generated by the AAC device. And apparently this is something which has already been done. But Corey had, uh, came up with a great point, which was uh, quite often what you're thinking, you yeah. do not want to be what, verbalized. Like, what is that filter? You know, like, I'll be honest, I, 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 there's, there's a lot of stuff in my head that I don't want anyone to ever hear. Like, exactly. So exactly. What is, how do you, what is the safety? For, yeah. What is that filter to... You know, it's not like you're you're physically hitting something. You know, I, yeah. I don't know. So uh, what they had actually been talking about filtering to some extent and how to filter intentional thought from non-intentional thought. And uh, the guy was saying that uh, the two types of thought have different signatures, and so it is possible yeah. to model for them. But is there? I'm curious. You know, like if I intentionally think yes a thought. I know. But maybe, maybe there, maybe there is different pulses between internal thought yeah. and ex and actually wanting to communicate. Like maybe there is a. I wouldn't be surprised if the brain waves is different. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I mean, we're we're too it, we're too stupid to understand any of this, but it seemed like anyway it had a lot of cool potential. So I mean, Corey, you were talking about AI and computers. Yeah. And uh, what if you don't even have to talk to your computer? You just think, and uh, using yeah. your AI assistant, you get it, what you need. That's and they, they they had a cool example too of I believe it was like kind of hearing aid device where they oh, the yeah, person yeah, had yeah, headphone yeah, earbuds yeah, in yeah, yeah, yeah. and there was two people talking in a really crowded place yeah. and it could tell when you looked at person A That's right. it filtered out person B and everything mm -hmm, else and mm -hmm. then when they turned their head to B yeah. it quieted person A and you mm -hmm. could only hear person yeah, B. Yeah, you literally it's focus on cool. what, what you want to listen to and it kind of filters out the other sounds so you can yeah. hear that sound the best. Yeah. It was very cool. Really cool technology. So not uh, super relevant to what we're doing at the moment but I just, you know, it's that yeah. kind of stuff Stuff outside of the field that sometimes I just find the most interesting because I'm not as familiar with it. Yeah. Yet, so. And so some of the other sessions were more kind of you know, the one uh, with Mike May was just updates to um, uh, good maps. Yeah. You know, main thing with that out. was they have a new way of scanning uh, the spaces. Uh, that's smaller a lot lidar. Smaller and and yeah. Most of the way you're going to use it and all that is sort of the same. Check out our. Uh, you can look on the channel, do a search for good maps. We've got a video on good maps, so you can kind of see how it works. Um, but the rest were sort of, I don't want to say more professional driven, but they were, you know, how to how to go from Word to PDF. Yeah, how to create stuff. accessible. Nothing, PDFs. nothing that we really kind of need to cover today. So, no, although there was some interesting stuff in that as well to do with like the WCAG standards and uh, particularly in terms of areas of vision impairment that we might not consider, like the color blindness. Yeah, stuff, you know, yeah. Like that, I, so. I was hoping for a little more. Um, I don't want to say real world examples or how to. Well, they never did. There was supposed to be a demo, but then yeah. they ran out of time, so they never did the Which, demo. So. Uh, you know, I, I wanted to judge him, and then I thought, you know what? We, we went out of time all the time. time. <laughs> so, so I shouldn't judge him too yes, hard. Yes, yes. Um, and then the Google Lookout, again, we've got a video on Google Lookout app, to be honest. The. Um, 
Uh, it was. It was. It, it was basically a, a, the the presentation was basically designed if you had never heard of the Google Lookout app. I was a little bummed again. No, no examples. The only example, real life example. Well, I'm not even gonna say real life. Was a was a very produced, in my opinion, was a, a fake video. Fake video yeah. about using Google Lookout on the streets of New York. And yeah. no judgment on the woman who was in the video um, because you know she was asked to do it, and it was it was her. You know, whatever. But I just I didn't find it to be helpful. Yeah, it wasn't all, really a real world scenario. Yeah. It, it was very kind of faked for the sake of, you know, promoting the, the app. Too um, too markety. Very markety for for what this presentation. Whereas we I saw thought. we saw a video in the Good Maps presentation of a user using Good Maps that was exactly what you would want to see. It was yeah. a real person using the app in a real situation that is vi you know is is a viable thing that people would want to do yeah. in their everyday life. And even when it wasn't working perfectly, that was all in the video. It wasn't cut together that in any good. you know way. And, and as a side note, for indoor navigation, I do think Good Maps is the future. Mm. It does not require any hardware installation or or upkeep. From the facility. That's not entirely true because you would, if if the building, if the rooms change, for example, purpose, which we do here all the time, that stuff would have to be updated. You know. But, well, hold on. Hold, hold, oh. hold on. Oh. Yeah, yeah, there, yeah. No, you're right. There is some upkeep, <laughs> but, but not, not. But that's from just going in and renaming yeah, one yeah, office yeah. to another. No, I that. But not actually rescanning. No, not nothing actually, like that. Know, Unless yeah. you change the building. Correct. Itself. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Uh, but I do think it is probably out of all of the indoor it's the least, options out there. I think it, it's going to be the the. the it one. requires the least upkeep, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. And, and I think it was really really good too. Compared, a lot of the the Bluetooth beacons only have you know five, ten, maybe thirty meter. Uh, you like that? Uh, that was very good. Yeah, thank I'm you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, range. How many feet is that? A lot. No, no one, nobody has ever figured out how to switch metrics. There is no material. conversion criteria. Yeah, sorry. No. Anyway, but it, it does a much better job of um, you know, longer range, you mm. know, than what the Bluetooth. So. Um, yeah. Quick tip: if you are going to go to see some, don't stay in the Marriott where the conference is. Stay in the Hilton instead, which is directly opposite because it's much better. It was much better. I did yeah. like it very much. Yes. All right. So let's move on. Let's talk about some stuff that we saw on the show floor. Now we did record some video, uh, Corey. Yes. On a scale of one to ten, how would you rate our efforts in recording video from the show floor? Oh, our efforts were an eight. Okay. Now you're the for results effort. were a negative eight. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, the stupid microphones didn't work, so all of the video is. Uh, the video looks beautiful. We had a nice little iPhone gimbal. It was the the uh, mics didn't work, so it was using the iPhone audio, yeah. uh, which you can imagine what that's like in a very busy, loud uh, show floor. So, yes. <clears throat> Jonathan it did work his magic um, to to the best of his ability. We give him huge props for putting a lot of effort in, but it wasn't his fault. It was garbage in, garbage out. Mm -hmm. uh, there's nothing you can do about it, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, but there are a few that were. Okay. Well, you know what? I don't even know. Yeah, we'll yeah, say they're, okay. they're manageable. They were manageable. They're okay. So next week, Thursday, we will see. Uh, you'll see a video on <clears throat> on some of the ones that were were le were legible. Yeah, exactly. Is it legible? Well, it's, it's not, but I understand hearable? what you're saying. Understandable. Understandable. Yeah, uh, Jonathan, if you could look up the audio equivalent of legible, we would appreciate it. <laughs> Ooh, discernible. That's not bad. Just came up with it off the top of the like head. It. I like yeah. it. Uh, if anybody has a better word, please put it in the comments. Right. And for the moment, uh, let me log on to my computer. Okay. And we're going to take a look at some websites for some of the products that we saw. First one, Corey, the Guidance. No, sorry. Glide. Glidance. Glide. Um, now, Corey, you tried this out. Please yes. give us a quick. Um, a quick idea about what the Glidness is about. So this is a fully, uh, this is a, 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 a primary mobility device. It's mm -hmm. made to replace your white cane or dog guide. Yep. Uh, hold a handle. It is a device down on the ground. It's got two wheels. Uh, it is not motorized. You push it forward, but the wheels do uh, turn in, a, uh, in 360 degrees and have brakes. There was three cameras, I believe, that are going to be in the finished uh, device that'll obviously have obstacle um, avoidance and be able to scan you know, from the floor up to your head. Mm. And basically, you just walk with it, and it will you know, guide you. Uh, so it must have motors, though, if it's turning the wheels, right? I mean, uh, uh, yeah. it doesn't have any motors. It's, no motors. It's okay. got, well, it does turn the wheels, so, so there must be. It's got to be. 
It has to be something if it's turning wheels. I yeah. Thought, I thought he said uh, it doesn't, and it's just you pushing it. It you you do push it, but it does turn itself to the right or left. So something needs to be turning those wheels. It says let's glide intelligently steer the way. Yeah. So yeah. there must be. It's the point like is, it does. Maybe we don't call. Breaking on one side, which makes you move the other side. It's could not, be. It's not accelerating. Yeah, the, 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 point, the point is, anyway, it does not pull you. It does <laughs> no, not pull it you. It does not pull or yes. push you. Yes, or push. Um, so then I did a, a demo. Wait, the only way it would be able to push you is if you were holding it behind you. No, unless it went in reverse. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> I never thought about that. Oh my god, it's stuck in reverse! <laughs> um, although, I, I do want to bring that up for in a quick second. because So okay. I did a demo. Yes. And, and you uh, were wowed. Well, until I, until the truth was revealed. Yeah, I, so I was. Yeah. I, I walked forward. It, drew, it, moved, it took me around people, and then stopped at a table. Now, first of all, that was one thing that was a little weird. It stopped, and so then you know that you have to back up. Mm. But now, un, what you would typically do with a dog guide or a cane is you would turn around mm -hmm. and walk. But now I'm walking backwards with nothing. Could you have turned protected. around? You probably could have, but that I don't know how easy that device moves. Mm -hmm. You know, like I think you have to propel it. So you, mm -hmm. it, you would have had to probably pick it up and spin it around. But anyways, yeah. I was wowed. Mm -hmm. It felt very much like using a dog guide mm -hmm. until mm -hmm. where I stopped being wowed mm -hmm. is that I found out that the it, the gentleman was using a joystick and steering me around. <laughs> Now, that's obviously not what the final prototype is, or the final version won't be a guy with you driving it around. Because <laughs> um, they, they literally are, like, right at the very, very beginning stages. They were at CSUN testing, getting information. So if it works like the uh, the guy driving it did, yeah. it'll be interesting. Yeah. Uh, I, I would be interested. I don't know that I would trust it, mm. but but we'll see. I mean, I, mean, I definitely would have my cane with me. Dogs but. probably better, but then again, dogs require a lot more maintenance, potentially. They do. So. I could see why this is sort of a maintenance-free, yet gives you way more, uh, you know, gives you, you know, sort of the benefits of a dog guide, but um, I also, I, I don't know, you know, I, I want to say I kind of trust a, com uh, a dog more than a yeah, computer. Yeah, exactly. I mean, dog has intelligence. Yeah. But then again, AI. Well, that's true. Who's more intelligent, a dog or AI or a human? It depends. Probably the dog. Wants to write an email to your boss, then probably <laughs> AI. But. So, so Glidance was kind of cool. Yeah. There, there, one thing I think that's not going to happen is I asked him what the price was going to be. Mm. Well, I guess I take this back. He said that he, 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 they're going to price it at the same price as an iPhone. Now, if you buy an iPhone 15 Pro Max 1 terabyte or whatever the biggest is, it's mm. like... Fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars. Even that, I don't know that they Seems could get a product. Even, even yeah. yeah. So I'll be curious. Um, you know, I think some of it will depend on what material. Well, Corey, you'll be glad to know. You can go to uh, glidance.io, G-L-I-D-A-N-C-E.io, and you can reserve your glide today. That's the new uh, website. Dot .io. .io. Yeah. I see that everywhere now. Mm. Yeah. Uh, well, I guess the, all the good dot coms have, have been taken. So. Yeah. Mm. You know what a, a good one would be? Mm. Mar.io. Oh! If Nintendo doesn't have that, they definitely should. Yeah. Oh, or maybe we should buy it and sell it to Nintendo. Yeah. yeah. Or Cass.io. Oh, you are full of good ideas today. Thanks. All right, uh, we've only got 10 minutes here, so we should Jesus, try and get happened? through these. I don't know. If anybody would like a Glidance, uh, thinks that's cool, then let us know we in the chat. We do have one question. Please. Um, it's a bit off topic, but maybe you saw something that would be applicable. Okay. Um, one of our commenters uh, is saying that they have Stargarts, and uh, they need a readable device that's wearable, not too expensive. Um, where should I start looking? When they say readable device, what does that you mean? mean uh, like a wearable. A wearable, wearable lecture? Yeah. Uh, well, there's, okay, so not expensive is the difficult part there, I would right. say. But uh, for Stargarts, so we've had a lot of success with the Iris Vision Live 2.0. So that could be a good place to look. But you are talking about 3299 on that 3, one. 3299. Uh, yeah, 3299. <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, there was the Oxite, uh, which was a good for a low price effort, but we don't believe that that one is being manufactured anymore. Yeah. Um, 
so yeah, I mean, definitely when, when it comes to Stargarts, having the wider field of view and the larger screens is beneficial. I would look at the Iris Vision Live 2.0. We do have a video on it as well. I think if you are really looking for wearable, it's going to be tough yeah. to be affordable. I yes, think there yes, are yes. portable devices or including your cell phone, your iPhone using the case of Vision. Ooh, case for vision. <laughs> Is that what it's case yeah. for vision? Yeah, uh, which we'll talk about maybe here in a well, let's second. Let's talk about it right now because we just talked about it. Okay. So we're going to talk well, about was, it. Yeah. Anyways, you might want to look at other things than wearable if you're looking uh, forward to yeah. form. So case for vision. Yes. You got more. You you talk this one because you got more you know visual kind of input on it. Um, okay, I'm going to tell you what I can remember. Okay. Okay, this is a case for your phone. You put the case on the phone. The, the case has legs built in. It's actually surprisingly compact and folds up nicely. So it is practical to have this case and put the phone in your pocket without, um, without you know, feeling this big bulky <laughs> case. Bulk, yeah. Yeah, and uh, basically it's a really simple idea, but I think a really good idea. It allows you then to prop your phone up and kind of use your phone as a CCTV. Now, they actually have an app that comes with it, which to me seemed kind of weird. I wonder if you have, I know you need to use the app, I think for, well, it sounded like you really needed to use the app. Yeah, well, but actually, I'm not sure. Yeah. I mean, uh, you, you get the case, you get the app, it's an all-in-one kind of deal, and it has magnification, and does it, it doesn't have OCR? I don't moment? believe so. Yeah, so it's got, it has magnification. Now, actually, one of the very clever things about this is yeah. there is a fold-out mirror that's part of the case um, and this is so cool. So um, you can use it, uh, you have the phone and you have the legs folded out and the phone's pointing down at the table and you have your document underneath. We're kind of looking at an image on the screen of that for those who are able to see that at the moment. But then you fold down this mirror and now the camera is uh, kind of looking into the distance instead. They call it a, tel it's their telescope. Yeah, the telescope, yeah. It was a really simple uh, but clever idea. Now, yeah. you're gonna lose some image quality because you are kind of looking in a mirror at that point. Uh, and it's not super adjustable, you know, Yeah. Uh, but still like a really clever uh, idea. I find it to be one of these clever things where sometimes the best tool is the tool you have on you. And yeah. if you already have your iPhone exactly. on you and you know that it can do decent with magnification, this is a way to like not have to hold it. And yeah, it was it was clever. One ninety nine, I believe. Um, retail? I forget, but well, we're going to find out in a second. Um, on that but, website? Yeah, um, but uh, it does say the first device we are launching is built for the iPhone 15 Pro, so I guess you would have to have that phone, which is kind of specific at the yeah. moment. Um, but uh, it was really neat. Now, to my mind, Corey, yes. um, you could just use the built-in iPhone magnifier app. I mean, maybe the case With for it? vision, yeah, maybe the case for vision app has some special properties, but um, that yeah. iPhone 15 magnifier was perfectly good. I would think so. I would be curious why, Why? yeah, I would want to see why you'd have to use theirs. Yeah, and could then... You, or could you use it with the Roboka app? You could use it with the Roboka. Rebecca from Roboka. And uh, we do not have that in our uh, tab here because we, we did a video on that pr uh, previously. But we did see Rebecca from Roboka at the uh, mm -hmm. at CSUN and we did do a live stream with her, yeah. which is fun. But uh, anyway, this case for, for Vision, you could also, as far as I can see, use it for OCR as well. The main problem being you're not going to be able to get the phone high enough to capture an entire yeah, page. Yeah, I do believe we asked that and he said, no, this yeah. one is not. So I don't think it does a full 8.5 by 11. But right. you're right, maybe you could you get could a slide a document bit. under Underneath and mm -hmm. still get a little bit. So using an app like Seeing AI or whatever it might yeah. be. Um, so it was cool. It was simple, but um, it's one of those. Th yeah, it's one of those things where you're like, well, this is just a good idea, uh, and it doesn't cost too much. We think so. Yeah. Let's see if we can find out what a, how much it I, costs. I think it was one ninety nine. I'm gonna go with you on. Uh, oh wait, if we hit pre order here. Uh, so it looks like, okay, pre-order is expected to start shipping in Q2 2024. Regular price, 29999. CSUN price, 199. So if you want to get it, you should get it now because they've still got that CSUN special It's 100 price. bucks off. That's a good deal. That's a lot of money off. Yeah. And to be honest, 199 seems about right to me. I don't know 299 I is... would probably steer away at 300 bucks. Yeah, Although I'd like to lot. see that uh, that app still too, though, and see what it, if that it's adding true. anything to it. But... Yeah. But uh, anyway, cool, simple idea. Yeah. yeah could be useful. What, um, what else do we have in there? All right. Biped. Yeah, Biped was another mobility device, but this one was not a primary device. It was made to be used with a cane or a dog guide. Harness that goes uh, over your shoulders and around the back of your neck. Mm -hmm. One side had camera, one side had computer for AI, and basically it would just look around you and do obstacle avoidance and probably give you directions and stuff. Fine, it, it makes sense. 
The problem was, is it was too bulky. Where do you put it when you get to where you're going? That's a good question. It, it was surprisingly bulky, like it the was. camera housing and like the the bits that hang down when you've got it on were like, yeah, very bulky. It was big. Yeah. Uh, it looked like yeah. I was wearing um, football shoulder pads. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what it was like. Um, and, and kind of felt like that. But when you get to a restaurant, then, you know. So, uh, uh, but who knows? Maybe this is prototype, uh, and I think it was. Mm -hmm. um, and it was, you know, maybe it's going to be smaller. But I do also believe it was 4250 yes. bucks. That sounds too. about right. Uh, so I think yeah. that's pretty, that's expensive. Yeah, so uh, interesting, for sure. Uh, I don't believe that our video came out good enough for this one to, uh, no, to use it. No, I think pretty so quiet. Yeah, it was yeah. very quiet. But uh, anyway, uh, you can go to biped. Dot AI, that's B I P E D dot AI, and you can find out more about uh, that one. Uh, Anything else on the list that's worth? Yeah, I think we've got lots of exciting things coming. Well, I just meant time wise. Oh, yeah, no, we still got a bit of time here. Uh, okay. the, the Zumax Snowpad, I would like to talk about that one. Oh, please. Please, yeah. We. Uh, <laughs> Well, I did not want to be part of that video. <laughs> yeah, that video <laughs> didn't come out very well. <laughs> Unfortunately, the device wasn't working properly when the lady yeah. was trying to give us the demo and, and it I, all went a bit down. And then Corby she, walked, she walked away and I had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> she walked away. Corey didn't know where she'd gone. Yeah. She was speaking very quietly. Corey couldn't hear anything she was saying. So Corey just stopped talking. <laughs> yeah, I just yeah, um, started to disengage. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't the best interview we've ever done. But uh, anyway, it was quite an interesting device. Zoomax do have a habit of kind of um, taking other people's devices and making their own versions. Um, this is kind of one of those. It's kind of like the Magnalink tab. It's kind of like the Clover book uh, or Connect 12, I guess, would be uh, a closer. Yeah, um, Connect example. 12 sounds right. It was using yeah. either an iPad or an Android tablet. That's right, right which is kind of cool, yeah, because, I mean, you don't get a lot of stuff that can use iPads. You know what I mean? Yeah, I yeah. agree with you 100%. Yeah, because normally the, iP the Apple ecosystem is kind of closed down. But, uh, yeah. but yet everyone has iPads. Yeah, I exactly. Say everyone, exactly. No, but, but a lot of people yeah. do. So um, this device, it seems like you just get the, the stand and the camera. And um, it's, so it's compatible with your own iPad. And you put your iPad in, and it's going to give you the stuff you'd expect, so like near magnification. And it must be using, they must have their own app. Uh, yes, yes, for sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but the quality from the camera that they have built into the stand was actually really good. Well, it is the be their best distance That's camera, what she said. She said the which best is good. I, I like when company uses their best stuff instead of their, <laughs> <laughs> their worst For this stuff. device, we decided to use yeah. uh, some some crappy cameras we, we had camera in the back. camera in the closet. That <laughs> yeah, <we used. laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, you. I recall you saying that the, the distance camera, it was pretty good. Yeah, so um, anyway, it's going to be pretty similar functionality to these types of devices yeah. that you would expect. Uh, not out yet, so we don't know too much about pricing. And stuff no, like I didn't. Yeah, but uh, anyway, something to look for. In a similar vein, the Cloverbook Pro XL, if you need a foldable magnification device that can do full page OCR um, for school in particular, but uh, other purposes mm -hmm. as well. Uh, we already did a video on the Cloverbook. You can check that out, but this one, Cloverbook XL, a larger screen and uh, again, you can do a whole two screen setup. So you can yeah. have a separate screen for distance magnification, separate screen for close up. And uh, you can fold the screen uh, kind of toward you, which is being shown in this picture here for those who are able to see it. Um, it's a pretty cool device. I'm surprised Cloverbook isn't more popular. They, the, yeah. the Cloverbook 10 is a pretty interesting device. Uh, option, I think. I think so as well. Um, yeah. But I don't, and I'm not sure, I forget who made, is it Clover? I don't remember the company now. Uh, but no, it's, um, I can't remember. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I wanted but, to say Ice, uh, no, it's not. Uh, I can't remember. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's interesting. I, I, I think, uh, you go, like Luke said, go back and look at our Clover Book 10 video. Yeah. Uh, I'm guessing this is probably a 12. Uh, that's screen, uh, 16. 16. That's what it says here. So that's like the reveal. <laughs> it's it's very yeah. similar to the reveal, although I would almost think In a think much more it, portable package. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, if you're in the uh, education area. Uh, and our video that's coming out next Thursday, there mm -hmm. will be, that one turned out well. because oh, okay. It was just you right close to the camera that's talking. Right, yeah. So you'll see a little bit more. You can get... Uh, that video, that that overview was literally less than a minute. It was that we actually <laughs> just did more here than we did there. Yeah, we did, yeah. We'll still be able to check it out. <laughs> Uh, anyway, so that was some of the stuff that yeah. we looked at. And uh, all in all, it was a good conference this year. Eastsight Go. Oh, yeah, uh, we, we, I Go. I forgot to put it on there. Didn't get, a li didn't get a recorded video of it. I don't uh. think they wanted to, mostly because it was not finished product yet. Yeah. Uh, I think most of it's done. I think it's just some uh, cosmetic stuff they're doing. You were, you, you so Eastsight's obviously been around forever. 
We've had all you know all the way up to the East Side Four. East Side's, in my opinion, it's always been okay. Yeah. Um, but you were pleasantly surprised about the or with the East Side Go that it was pretty decent. Yeah, I thought it was good. I mean, the screens are smaller compared to the VR style headsets. This is more of your kind of regular sunglasses kind of style. Yeah. Um, but the quality of the image, from what I could tell, now I did have to take off my glasses, and my vision is, uh, you know, sure. is quite bad. When Although I don't they did say on. you they were you could do prescription. You can build inserts, prescription so. lenses in, yeah. But yeah. Uh, obviously but, for the demo, you didn't have. It. Right, right. But uh, the quality of the image seemed to be really good. The screen brightness in particular was uh, very good okay. and it still has the best in class in terms of magnification 24 times yeah. magnification um, so from what I could tell in my brief demo with it it really seems like a neat device the only uh, weird thing about it is that the battery pack is a horseshoe shaped uh, thing that you hang around your neck yeah basically. I know those always make me nervous both from a weight a heat a yeah. comfort uh, yeah I just don't know what else you do with the battery though it does take the weight off of your head and face, yeah. which I think is good. Yeah, I think it's a neat idea. Um, I mean, it did. It felt fine to wear it. I just, I'd worry about the heat somewhat, but uh, yeah, hopefully, I assume yeah. that they've taken that into account. Yeah, it, hopefully you know? it's insulated, so. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was a neat device, easy to operate, and I think it will be a good, uh, it, it possibly is their best device. And I think okay. they are saying just under five? Yeah, 40, yeah, 40, 42, 44. Four, five, nine. <laughs> Four, five, nine. Seven, eight. Forty two, five, nine. Um, uh, I, I think I remember it saying under five. I thought it was like 49 something, yeah. 49.50 maybe? Yeah, something like that. When you consider their original device was 15 grand, they have come down in price quite yeah, a lot. They have come yes. down. All right, let's leave it there. If we have no more questions in the chat, then we shall bid you all adieu. And we will see you in two weeks' time when we will have to think about a top topic. So keep your eyes glued to the email because we will send out reminder emails about whatever that show will be about. We have a YouTube channel. You should be on it at the moment, Vision Forwards Tech Connect. Please do make sure to um, like and subscribe and all of that good stuff. It really does help us out and we appreciate it. And with that, Corey, any closing words? Yes. Good. That was it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> well, my life has been changed. Okay. We look forward to seeing you all in a couple of weeks' time. Take Sometimes it easy. Sometimes it's the words not said. <laughs> <laughs> that are more important than the words. You sound like a jazz musician. Uh, hold on, Jonathan has something for us. So just a quick question uh, to clarify. They, when they were talking about a wearable that they wanted, um, yes. they were actually talking about eyeglasses. Uh, oh. So I'm not exactly sure how we can help them with that. But yeah. is there anything you can say about wearable eyeglasses for Star Trek? Uh, so I mean, not really. That depends on your level of vision and what you're trying to do. I mean, you can, for example, get high-powered uh, optical lenses in a pair of glasses, and maybe that uh, you know that would allow you to read. But it's going to depend on your level of vision loss, and you have to bear in mind the stronger that you make spectacle lenses, um, the closer you will have to yeah. hold your reading materials. The focal distance gets shorter and shorter. The stronger that you make the lenses. I mean, what you have to appreciate is that if you're talking an eye disease, focusing the light correctly on the retina is not going to solve the issue. Um, so, yeah. um, you know, it, it, again, it depends on your level of vision loss, but it, you're probably going to be wanting to think about uh, alternative um, methods of accessing things. And I think at the end of the day, you need to find a low vision optometrist. Definitely. Find Definitely. somebody around yes. your area who does low, not just an optometrist, <laughs> but find a low vision optometrist yeah. uh, in your best. Because I think there's the Accutech too. Yeah, there are telescopic uh, 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 glasses that you can get and things like that. It all depends on what you're trying to do. Yeah, so that yeah. stuff, exactly, as Corey said, you really need to uh, try it out and speak to a professional. So. And we are professionals, but not that pr level of professional. Yeah. Are we professionals? <laughs> we are professionals. <laughs> all right, everybody. Uh, nice to see you, and uh, we will see you again in two weeks. Bye for now. Bye. Thanks for joining us for another Tech Connect Live. If you enjoyed Corey and Luke's antics, be sure to join us next time. For all things Tech Connect, go to vision-forward.org slash techconnect.